G'day fellas, and welcome to the Outback Octagon. This is the first game of the Outback Octagon, the inaugural game of the Outback Octagon, spawning in a bit of a strange spot. We've got Salami, who is going to be playing as the Mongols, immediately picking up a wolf. I'll bring down our player score so you can see exactly who we've got and where they are. So we've got Salami. He's going to be on the Mongols, and he's making his way towards the middle of the map. Next up, we've got State, who is going to be playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, also going to be in the middle of the map here. Next up, we've got Kaio from Japan. I'll take a look and see if we can find him. Kaio in the orange. Going to be playing the Rus. Looks like he's got this eastern side all to himself. He's going to be happy with that. He's got two villages already here. Third one making its way back. Next up on... On, uh, on the purple, we've got Lucifron from Spain. He is going to be playing as the Abbasid Dynasty, making his way back. You can see he's actually just got a mill out here. He's going to be starting off down towards the south side. So we might already have our corner boy beginning. Next up, we've got Blade55555, who spawns in as the Holy Roman Empire up towards the north with a giant gold vein right next to his town center, a boar. He's got everything he's ever dreamed of up here. And of course, Blade. He's from the United States. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Ohio. Oh, look how look how close these guys are. Next up, we've got B playing as the pink English player. Look at that spawn he's got. He's got another villager down here to the south. Smart move, just keeping that down there. And then finally. In the color green. Spawning as the Chinese. The best free-for-all civilization there is. It's Beastie Cutie. Damn, damn, damn. What a game we've got. And But that, that's not all. That's not all. <laughs> we've also got Iagus, who is going to be spawning in as the Rus, and he is going to be very, very close to B. I suspect that we are going to have a little bit of... Uh, <laughs> a little bit of early shenanigans here up against these two players. Uh, and uh, it ain't going to be pretty. So we're going to close this one down. You guys know where the civilizations are. Bottom right-hand corner, you're going to be able to see the map. It is nice and zoomed in. And it looks like everybody is... Somewhat. Oh, oh, oh. He spots it. He spots it. B spots it. I don't think that Iago's spots it. Iago's just chilling out. He's fine. Uh, he's having a great time. Uh, but interesting to note, no one has moved over towards the left side. The left side is completely vacant right now. So if we were to split this map in half, everybody is on this right side of the map. Now, I don't know whether that was just a consequence of villagers spawning that way. In fact, we can actually track where the villagers were. You can see there was a villager down here over on this side. Another villager down here. Yeah, it definitely seems like people just didn't spawn over on that direction. We see Beastie moving out. In fact, we did have Beastie that spawned in over here. So it just seems people were, were spawned over towards that eastern side. And so naturally, that is where the town centers come down. But we begin, ladies and gentlemen, with the Outback Octagon. So let's talk a little bit about how this is going to work. So we've got 32 of the world's best players going up against one another in a free-for-all environment, battleground, whatever you want to call it. And these guys are going to be playing off each week. There's going to be four different games. And now we do get confirmation that Iaguz sees B. So these guys do know about each other. They know where each other are at. So each week, there's going to be four free-for-all games that get played. And with that, there's going to be eight players in each game, and they are going to be rotating out in a Swiss-style system. So if you're unfamiliar with the Swiss systems, give it a Google. I'm not going to explain it in too much depth because uh, I'd be here for quite a while because there's like four different types of systems, and that's just going off the European ones. And then we've got different types of scoring. But our, our scoring is a little bit different. The way that we are going to be scoring this game is based on place. So starting off... If you get knocked out first, then you're going to get the lowest amount of points. By the same token, if you finish first, you're going to get more points than that guy that got knocked out first. And there is a tiered amount of points, with first picking up 15 points and second place only picking up seven. From there, third place picks up six, fourth place picks up five, so on and so forth. So what happens in addition to that to promote certain behaviors? So as an example, we really want to see people fighting. So we've gone ahead and given extra points to anybody who kills somebody or eliminates someone in the early game or the late game or the mid game or any part of the game. If they eliminate them, they get extra points. Uh, so that is going to be a, a big aspect of this game as well. So in the event that you, you kill somebody, you're also going to be getting two points. So let's say that you come seventh, you get two points. But let's say you killed the guy who came eighth. So now you get four points because you got an extra two points for killing him. In addition to that, you also get... A, uh, an additional amount of points if you win with a wonder 
if there are at least four people alive. And I've got a sneaking suspicion that we might have ourselves a bit of a, a wonder up towards the north. Beastie's got a great little pocket in here. His resources aren't the best. He's got one gold mine here. He's got a second gold mine out here. But he's got the entire left side of the map that he can expand to. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if he comes down towards this position. We'll take a look over towards these two. This is where I suspect the majority of the, the battling will begin. Some interesting hunting cabins already coming out here from Kayo as well. Uh, but players just looking to sort of take their places. And we've also got down to the South Lucifron, who is is definitely in the pocket position. He's quite far away, and he's got some very nice natural uh, woods here as well. So you can see it's going to be very easy for him to just wall up and just forget about the rest of the world, I suspect. In fact, he's got a very nice little pocket down there. Uh, but... Uh, both of these, I mean, both both the North and the South players definitely in, in uh, very decent positions here and definitely would go into this game uh, as being as being favorites. But uh, we do have our Abbasid player, State, who we've been viewing recently. He's continuing to, to get to work here. We've actually got him on farms already. We'll tune in with each of the players. We'll start off with B. B was the, the player who spawned initially up towards this position. Uh, he's he's going to be very close to Iagos. We'll check in with him and see how he's doing. Whether we've got that age up coming through yet. It's going to be very short and very quick for one of these two players, I suspect. It is very rare that two players like this actually work it out. Big Snooper coming in with a raid. Thank you very much, Snooper. Welcome over, fellas. We are taking a look at this very first game, the inaugural game of the Outback Octagon, as Iagos is going to be putting down that first landmark. I suspect it's going to be... It is a Kremlin, and it is a... <laughs> Hello. Okay, we have got ourselves a little bit of a friendly... F <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Octagon. It is happening, and it is... It is fearsome, but now we've got some villagers coming out. Villagers moving towards the Kremlin in the center of the... In, I said the center of the map, but I feel like this probably isn't the center of the map. This is the center of these two guys right now. Kremlin villagers are slowly but steadily getting picked off. And you can see, look, we've got the counter town center out just absolutely shredding. The Gatling gun is out in force as well. He's managing to push this back, doing a great job. We continue to see that he's struggling. Oh, this is terrible for both of these players. And just remember, you know, these two guys are gassing each other out right now. That's what's happening. It is You've got player one over here in Iagos who is losing villagers. And at the same time, 3DB, who's losing villagers as well. We've got Kayo now reaching up to that second age. He's going to be our first player up into the feudal age. Continuing to focus down villagers. He's got eight on here. It's a perfect little position he's got in here with the Kremlin. The town center just very capable of continuing to fire off towards these villagers. Picks off another villager now. Both of these players have lost significant amount of villagers, but it looks like this Kremlin is slowly but steadily going to come up. It looks like a, a lock-on does happen. We've got scouts calling out non-stop towards each other. The Kremlin's got 12 villagers on it. He is really committing at this point to try and get this up. At the same time, we've got the council hall that is going to be coming up behind this as well. And now it looks almost certain that that Kremlin is going to be getting up. Beastie Cutie also reaching the feudal age towards the north. It looks like we've got an Imperial Academy coming down with a Barbican of the Sun immediately getting placed down. He's going to be heading towards that Song Dynasty and now the Kremlin is up and with that Kremlin coming up immediately it nullifies almost all of this position that we've got here for B. B's going to be trying his best to get out longbows from the council hall but it's just going to be completely stopped uh, by this Kremlin. We also see that he's training up villagers inside the inside the uh, the town center but the town center unfortunately uh, I, I think he does have the possibility to get out at the top. We'll have to wait and see. I suspect he's going to be able to come through here. The minimap will look a little bit weird right now. There comes the villager at the top. So he's absolutely fine on that position. We'll check in with the other players and see how they're doing. Because uh, we've got another player down here. We've got Salami. He's still happy in age one at the moment. In fact, what's going on with Salami? We've got Deer Stones coming down for him. We're still going to continue focusing on, on, on this initial battle as the wooden fortresses continue coming up for Iagos. And uh, I think at this, pe at this point, the question is, how do you break your enemy? So there's two ways to do it. Number one, battering ram. Number two, trebuchet. You can try for a battering ram. It's going to be very difficult going up against the Kremlin, going up against all these Rus villages. A, a trebuchet, though. A trebuchet would be able to work wonders because you get that bad boy down and you're going to be going through absolutely everything here. Uh, so that would definitely be the way I would be going. Uh, but we'll have to see how these players look to play it out. We'll tune in with the rest of them and see how they're doing very, very briefly. We've got State 
We'll take a look at his perspective and see exactly what he sees right now. He's slowly but steadily scouting out everyone. He knows that he's got Yagos to his north. He knows over towards his east, he's got Kaio there. It's going to be hunkering and bunkering down. Archery range is beginning to come out for him. We'll tune back in with this fight just because you, you know exactly what's going to happen. And the longbows continue coming in. And interestingly, not a lot of space here for B. Take a look at this. B got barely any space in the back. The wooden fortress is out. And he's going to try and sneak some units around. But unfortunately for him, the village is going to be able to jump inside and tear that to shreds no he manages to survive manages to bring that one out alive salami now reaching the feudal age as well now keep in mind salami is playing the mongols so he's going to be able to pick up actually did we even introduce salami at the beginning of this game yeah we did he was the first player we introduced never mind we got salami on the mongols so if he wants he's just going to be able to pick up his base and move he's he's not fussed at all he's playing the mongols um but i guess one of the big things to talk about here is that even though we've got quite a fair bit of action here the, the entire time that this is happening, you have got problems. And your problems right now is that you've got one of the world's best players playing the best, ob objectively the best free-for-all civilization, China. And that is a problem because it looks almost certain with a start like that, that you'd have to be very happy as Beastie Cutie. And I would not be surprised to see him take this one out even quite early in the game. J just with the amount of space he's got between his enemies as well, it's almost setting him up for a very strong position in the late game. His main threat's obviously going to be uh, Blade, who spawns very, very close to him. But we do see the Burgrave Palace coming out. Oh, Blade. Oh, don't do it, Blade. Blade actually might be going to annihilate one of his enemies that are close by now. He knows that Beastie's up here towards the north. So he could be thinking about that as well. But Blade, you can see the way he's... You can tell by the way he walks that this Blade means business. Watch out. He will cut you and he will cut you deep. We've got ourselves the Burgrave Palace coming up now. He's obviously scouted out where are the relics at? And that's a great question because I don't see any of them either. We've got one down here. We've got a second one down towards the south, a third one, uh, and then finally a fourth one. Now, I'm sure that there's probably more. I suspect you guys will be able to see it. Uh, but uh, for me, that's they're all the ones that I can see. Uh, archery range continuing uh, to come up now as well uh, for... Iago's at this point. We can see quite a longbow mass is beginning to build. Blacksmith has gone down, which signifies that there's probably going to be a siege engineering through shortly. Uh, at this point, he's really starting to run out of space. In fact, there's a fifth relic right there in the base. But uh, I guess that's why we've got the Burgrave Palace out. Now Blade looking intent to cause some havoc towards the northern position, having reached the Castle Age. In fact, he's going to be the first person up to the Castle Age here. Now he's got a number of options. Obviously, he can look to take out Beastie as well towards that northern position. And remember, each time you do take out a player, not only uh, do you progress yourself further in the rankings, so you go from being potentially 8th to 7th, which gets you a couple more points, but you also get additional points for killing uh, people. So, or for eliminating, I should say. Not killing, because we don't give points for, for murder. Uh, but we do give points for eliminating people. Uh, and so that is always going to be a consideration to be making. And I suspect that uh, the Blade... Almost a bit like a... I kind of think of Blade as like your your falcon who swoops in on a wolf and takes out the, the salmon that was in his mouth. Like, that's the kind of player I think of Blade as. And I, I feel like right now he's beginning to swoop. He's got the men at arms sitting here ready. He's got the wolf and he's got the falcon. And it's just about which one he decides to take out first because he can take out both of them if he wants to. That's going to guarantee him extra points. We'll check in with our other players and see how they're going. We've got State down to the south on the Abbasid Dynasty. He's going to be slowly but steadily working towards his economy, adding in that second town center. Meanwhile, up towards the north, I mean, you, you guys know exactly what's happening. We've got... Uh, I, his name is Beastie Cutie. Some people call him CG Cutie, but I feel like Wally Cutie is going to have to come up recently. Like, look, this is... I mean, this is, this is an interesting strategy. I suspect it's going to pay off very well for him. But uh, we've also got Kaio over towards the east, who is booming like a bit of a madman. We've got three town centers, four town centers coming in for Kaio. State now reaching the third age. Still behind this, we've got Blade, who is keeping his army very well hidden against his, uh, his enemies at this point. And that's one thing to note, is that he's going to be easily able to roll over his enemies. And indeed, it looks like he's made his decision. He's not heading north towards Beastie. He is heading south. And he might actually look to take out Yagos early in this game. It is not looking pretty for him right now as a whole storm of men-at-arms begin marching towards Yagos' base. He's got absolutely no units. He's only got two landmarks and those villagers are going to get pulled. Yagos is not feeling good right now. He's spawned between a rock and a hard place and the hard place seemed to be Blade. And he's not only hard, he is ready to get into it. 
And you can see the way that he's just menacing through this. Now, keep in mind, in the event that a player does look to go down here, there is the potential for us to see a potential landmark snipe. Now, that's going to involve these two players fighting over Iagos, a little bit like hyenas would fight over a gazelle, the way lions would fight over a gazelle. That's the way I picture it. So hopefully Iagos just doesn't tap out here. Hopefully he lets these two guys go. Be he just, he just taps out. He just says, good game. So I, I I can only help but feel... I mean, our administrators, our admins are going to, uh, to award points based on what their decision is there about who forces that surrender, whether it is Blade, whether it is going to be B, but I would almost feel certain that it is going to be Blade that has forced that surrender. And now Blade going to be coming in and looking to pick up the next victim, potentially. There are a lot of longbows underneath this town center, but Blade don't care. He's got a nice little uh, a nice little circle around on the backside here. Blade looking to take absolute blood this game. Look at the amount of damage he comes in. Now we'll try and get ourselves a little bit of shoop to whoop on the backside. Villager's going to get pulled as well, heading towards that Gatling gun of a town center. He's looking to surround his opponent and just taking his enemy to, to town right now. Blade is going ham. Now, how many men at arms has he got under? He's still got 21 men at arms. He's got plus two ranged armor. So those those villagers together with the longbowmen are going to be doing barely anything. And Blade is looking in early form. He's taken out the first player here. Almost certainly going to be taking out B as more reinforcements continue coming in. And he's working up quite a storm back here as the battering ram makes its way towards Blade's town. But you can't help but feel it might be a little bit lost as it continues searching for its soul. Blade just doing a bit of a run around at this point. Doesn't seem to have a lot of use units um, but uh, unfortunate start for our Australian player Iagos he's going to be tapping out quite early here and the question's going to be whether B is also going to be the one tapping out up towards the north we see Beastie just hiding out just just maintaining that independence happily we also see emergency repairs coming through and you know what I, now that I think about it Blade's going to be really happy with this because he's got the Holy Roman Empire a civilization which is incredibly good and also a civilization which he's very comfortable with. He's used, used this civilization many times. I've watched plenty of Blade games with him and he is always playing this Civ. He's going to be able to secure up this relic as well, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see a monk come out here shortly. And we'll tune in with the rest of the players and see how they're progressing because obviously we've got aggression over here. It looks almost certain that Blade is going to be killing B off shortly. More outposts coming up. The villagers have managed to get behind this, this gate, but uh, they are losing their starting landmark. 20 villagers inside this town center, slowly working down the town center those men at arms are. Salami now reaching the castle age as well. Doing a little bit of a 3TC boom in the middle of the map. I like it, Salami. I like it. Step right out is going up just to the south of Iagus' old base. And now that town center is burning. Things are not looking good for 3DB right now. Blade continuing to, to just absolutely run amok here. We see more villagers just trying their best to escape on this backside. But B, he's working with what little space he's got. It really isn't a, isn't a lot. First landmark is going to be going down now. Blade taking out the first of B's landmark. And all those villagers are going to be making their way towards the backside. Now, keep in mind, in the event he takes out the second landmark, that is going to be good game for B. And Blade is going to have taken out two people already. So keep in mind, every player he takes out, it's an extra two points for him. So not only does he go from being a, a potentially lowest of eighth place, but to sixth, but he also gets additional points. And that's one thing that you've got to really consider. If, if you're beastie and you're sitting up in the corner, you're booming, you're doing... Oh my God. Oh my God. The madman's gone for a four town center song dynasty boom. Oh my... <laughs> <laughs> oh my lord, we're going to have to tune in with him in a little bit. But this landmark almost seems certain to be going down. B is, is highly likely to be, lo be losing this. And unfortunately for B, he's going to be tapping out in this early game. We've got about the 18-minute mark that he's going to be tapping out. Though, that men at arm push is too damn strong. And Blade claims two lives, ladies and gentlemen. It is four points going over to our... United States representative. So I can already hear the crowd cheering for Blade right now. They are going absolutely wild because Blade is doing it, boys. He's got his civilization, the Holy Roman Empire. It's exactly what he wanted. He's managed to get it. And now he begins to move out. And now he looks for potential targets. Who does he have coming up next? That is the question. Salami, watch out. I've got news for you. Blade is on the move. This guy is just hunting everybody. But hold on a minute. Sal <laughs> Salami got the memo. And he made it just a few archery rangers. Just a few archery rangers. There is a lot of men at arms now. They're going to be moving out towards this step redoubt. Blade is definitely on a warpath. We're going to go tune in with Lucifer on the south side and see exactly what he is up to. He's beginning to stonewall off. 
He knows his enemy is on the other side. State is going to be over here looking to control that. We actually hear a sacred site being taken up towards the north. That is, that's actually Blade who's up there, even though we, we swore never to come down and we'll go up there and see Blade again. Uh, we, we do see him, but uh, we, you can see there's a lot of castles here. Uh, we've got, how many villages are we running at the moment for Lucifron? We're running 93 villages. Uh, he's sitting in the castle ages on the Abbasid dynasty, a very safe civilization in these free-for-all games. He's going to be super happy with this. But now Stonewall's continuing to come up across the map and Beastie Cutie is looking to stonewall all the things. Quite literally all the things. But look what we have here. Salami doing things only Salami would do at this point in the game. He is sneaking his deer stones into the corner here. He just wants to guarantee his longevity in this game. And Beastie quite really making the, the Great Wall of China right now. We'll tune back in over on the on the other side and see how Blade is doing with those men at arms. It looks like he's managed to evacuate with the majority of them. 15 of them heading back up towards the north. And we'll tune in with Beastie Cutie, who spawned up on that northern side in the color green, playing as the Chinese. Currently sitting on 167 villages. He's gone for a total of four town centers, doing a Song Dynasty boom, which is equivalent to... I'm just doing some math here. Six town centers. Six town centers is what he's got. He's got the beautiful granaries coming down as well. He is looking absolutely beautiful. And keep in mind, he knows. He knows. He knows that Salami is up here. He is trapped in Salami. He's got him completely walled in. He controls the destiny of Salami. When Salami is down to one landmark and three villages, he controls the destiny. He knows where Salami is. Stonewall going well and truly up now for Beastie. He has realized that no one has spawned over on this west side of the map, and he looks to take advantage. Now, one thing to note is that we do have this lake in the center that can always be used for potential drops. Uh, and we do actually see Salami has got a dock down, but it uh, doesn't really seem like he's got too much of a, of a plan. Wait, you can... <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I didn't realize you can put you can put your land you can put your landmarks in a transport ship. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I didn't realize that. We got we got scouts calling out everywhere right now. I don't know. I think those are Abbasid scouts that are calling out. Beastie is now going for once again the Great Wall of Beastie uh, towards this backside. We've we've seemed to enter a little bit of a lull. People entering into a safe position. But remember, this is something that we I, I talked about earlier. Is that in, in this game that we're playing right now? China, I mean, they're pretty much the guaranteed best civilization here. And the problem is, if you don't have people on side to take down China together, it's going to be very difficult for you. So one of the one of the difficulties that we had in determining the rules for this tournament was whether players should be allowed to team up. And the question was, well, how do you deal with China if you can't team up? If, if China is fighting against everybody one versus one, then surely there is no way that people can actually deal with it because China's just too good in the late game. They've got a crazy economy. They've got amazing walls that have got stupid amounts of health. He's yet to get those upgrades in, but you get what I mean, right? It, re it really starts building up quickly. Uh, interestingly, Salami had villagers behind here on the back, but... Oh, never mind. Beastie Cutie, he is looking. He is searching. Villagers coming up towards this corner. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's right around the... Oh, he, find, he finds him. He's like, hello. Hello. <laughs> he's got to... Don't wall him in. Do, uh, does Salami know? I think Salami knows. And now he's going for more outposts. Salami has an opportunity to run away, but ideally what he wants to do... Is Be Beastie needs to wall this in right now. I ideally, he wants to wall it in so that this, this Vroom Vroom car can't run away because that is exactly what it's going to be doing as soon as he realizes... He's just trying to get in deeper. <laughs> Wait, he, he could just he could just mine himself out though, couldn't he? he? He could just find a way through. He can set up a camp behind here. He'll be safe. I think that's what he's going to do. He's playing for placements and that's a smart move if I've ever seen one. He gets the Mongols here, which I mean, to be fair, that, that is his God given right. You know, that is, that is his right as the Mongols to pack up and leave. That's exactly what he's doing. And we can see the way he's just tunneling into this forest. Keep in mind, he doesn't have access to walls. He does not have access to walls. Beastie Cutie down towards the south side now. He's also got a villager that does get taken out. He was on the mining camp just looking to gather up some stone. But we'll tune in now back towards our star of the show, Blade, as he has actually taken the base of his opponents. But he's in trouble. He's in trouble because Kaio is on the move. And not only is he in trouble, but Salami might also be on the move as well, heading out with plenty of elite horsemen. We can see that he's only got crossbows to defend. It's going to be absolutely eaten alive out here. A whole bunch of crossbows on the ground. I'm not sure whether they died of mangonel shots or exactly what happened. But the Mongol Khan going to be forced back away from this position. And you can see Salami going to be in a very difficult spot here. 
At the same time, down towards that south side, we've got villagers just sieging down that uh, that mining camp. We'll head over into the perspective of Caillou and see what he's doing, because he is on 142 villagers right now. He is going absolutely ham. He's continuing to push out. He's playing the Rus, and he is just going full horsemen at this point in time. No knights. No lances, no sneaky shenanigans, just full horsemen. And now looking to turn his attention towards all of those villagers. Salami having a bit of a troubled time because he's only got archery rangers underneath his town centers. And as you guys know, ranged units don't do particularly well against horsemen. At the same time, we've got Blade up towards this northern position. Plenty of villagers back here. In fact, 27 villagers. He could look to wallalol those. There was a relic back here, and I do think he's taken that. Uh, but at the same time, now Salami is under threat. He is trying his best to evacuate. You can see the step right out making its way down to the shoreline. Look at the step right out go. Run, brother, run as fast as you can. And now he's going to be trying... He could pack up these town centers and put them all in a transport ship and move them off. Imagine that. He, he puts everything in a transport ship. That would be wild. It could be done. It could be done because he's looking like he might be trouble, in trouble right now. He's spawned in the middle of the map. We can see walls have come up on multiple angles. In fact, there's a whole bunch of sheep that are still back here yet to be collected. And we've actually got keeps and TCs for days right now in the base of state. He's looking really strong in this position. The horseman continuing to run rampage through the base of Salami, though. He's got 48 in queue with a single early knight. Has yet to upgrade those knights, so a little bit of a misclick there. Uh, but now just completely steamrolling over the top of Salami. Now, just remember, Salami ain't the type of guy who's just going to tap out this early in the game. No, 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 no. Salami ain't that type of guy. Now it looks like it's going to be Bang and I that are coming out for Salami. He needs something to hold on. He's only age three as well. Remember that. He's been spending all of his time over here just being sneaky and not enough time aging up. And as a result, he is under attack to a huge amount. I, I don't know. I can just hear non-stop the Abyssid scout just screaming out. I don't even think I'm viewing an Abyssid player right now. I can just hear it just going wild. It must... He, he's got the, the lungs of a god. Where are... <laughs> it's, it's this one right here, dude. It's state scout. It's just screaming non-stop. <laughs> Look at this guy. Do it. Do it. Do it. His voice is so loud, it echoes across across the entire battlefield. Look at it. And now Salami in real trouble. We hear a Wallalo coming in. He's going to be looking to steal out all of those villagers. Blade taking 25 of the finest, or rather 27 of the finest villagers from 3DB and turns them into his own. Great little conversion there for Blade. He'll be very happy with that one. Plus 27. And now Salami really looking in trouble. The people's favorite right now. He's going to be looking to evacuate towards the boats. But unfortunately, just like the Titanic, there aren't enough boats. Is, it, is that too soon? I feel like that might be too soon. Yeah, you know what? 100 years is enough. It's not too soon. There is not enough boats here. There is not enough boats here. Salami, get more boats for your people, my friend. There is not enough boats. He's, where did that transport ship go? It's, it's coming. It's coming. Hold on. Oh, oh, hold on. He's holding on for dear life. There's four villagers that remain. They managed to jump inside, but now they get focused down by the, uh, the transport ship. Transport ship manages to survive. Fortunately, Abyssin Scout just still calling out at... at, at oh my... <laughs> there's, se there's a second Abyssin Scout somewhere. I heard it on my in my left ear. Where is it? I will find you. I will find you second Abyssin Scout. I don't know where you are. I don't know where, you, where you're from, but I will find you and I will kill you. But not really. It's a, it's a quote from a movie. Don't worry. But uh, three town centers now down for Salami. We'll take a look from his perspective and see what he sees. We'll look through the eyes of Salami right now. He's got 17 population, of which four of them are gathering wood. He's continuing to move deeper into the forest. And now, you know, you've heard the legend of Corner Boy, but have you heard the legend of Forest Boy? Because that is the legend that is being born right now. Salami, a man famous for his wallalols, is now going to become famous for his forest diving because he is diving deep into this forest. He is making a brand new home among the gum trees. Unfortunately for him, it is quite a long chop for him to get through. In fact, he's going to be chopping for a very long time as this forest runs almost for eternity. We'll take a look now at how, how Kayo is doing. He's been slowly but steadily sieging down the base of Salami. So if, if Salami were to tap out at this point, you could say it was 100% uh, awarded to Kayo. There's no two ways about it. And we can hear that there's more units under attack. Finally cleaning up the scout. Yeah, get out of here, Abyssin scout. You've sung your last chorus, that is for sure. Get out of the game. 
You're, <laughs> you're damn Abyssin Scout, dude. Why is it that the Abyssin Scout, it like bypasses everything? It just, it's just screaming. You screamed yourself to death. <laughs> the, everybody in the game could hear that stupid Scout singing. <laughs> <laughs> but now the horseman going to be coming out, looking to try and connect. We can see Blade is moving out towards this central position. Kaios down here on the south side. A lot of men at arms as well as the Lanskinex coming in and just swinging to win. Doing a great job of holding on to this position. Manganel's on the backside as well. Going to be looking to clean this up. Beautiful little hold right there from Blade as he continues to push out. Salami going to be in absolute shambles. You can see the landmarks just chilling out from a whole bunch of sheep as well. But they're slowly and steadily getting taken out by, by his opponent. Salami just, just chilling out now, making a new home among the gum trees over on that west side of the map. Beastie knows he's over there. And look at this beautiful play from Beastie. This is, this is just smart moves. So for anybody wondering exactly what that's all about, what is this play from Beastie Cutie? Let me explain it. This landmark is the key to his success. This landmark can only be killed with siege units. It can't be killed with fire lances. It can't be killed with palace guards. It can't be killed with spearmen. Nothing. It can only be killed with bombards, trebuchets, sprinkles, mangonels, etc., etc. And as a result, by him walling this in and then leaving it here, it means if, if someone tries to go for a fire, fire lance snipe or some sort of snipe and kill all of his landmarks, that not only are they not going to be able to find this landmark, they're not going to be able to kill this landmark either. So that, that's essentially it. It's a very smart move from him to do that. But now we hear the units really starting to come out. Raids are also coming through. It looks like we might be having a bit of a multi-pronged attack. He is able to actually break through units here. So we'll have to see whether he's able to do that. You can see he's got a little bit of a front in here. Palace of Swabia pumping out villagers non-stop. He's still yet to cut his way back through here. But uh, it does look like Blade has found his next target. And it's going to be Kaio. So still we've only got two players that are knocked out of this game. Iagos and, and 3DB. So Blade could be the one that goes through and kills them all. He is an absolute marauder. And I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. Looks like the Bombard is going to get taken out. At this point, Kaio is trying to stabilize. And we can hear those units coming out non-stop for him. He's now researching into elite men at arms as well as elite spearmen. Chemistry also coming in. And down towards the south, it looks like we might have we might actually have a little bit of a battle on our hands. It's the two Avacid players fighting up against each other. Lucifron and State also going at it. These guys have started base building, but I got news for you. Unfortunately, there seems to be another way through. These guys have decided that they've got mutual walls out towards that eastern front. And as a result, it means that uh, there might be a way to get through those walls if they're not careful. But now working his way towards that front, we actually hear the siege moving. They could be heading up towards this position. A little bit of a chop through potentially coming through. But now, more and more units slowly but steadily coming through. This is the inaugural game of the Outback Octagon. There is plenty of action living up to all the hype. Blade 55555 five, 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 definitely being a huge star here and looking to try and take out his next enemy. But unfortunately for him, the Streltsy do look to hold in this position. Kaio from Japan going to be pushing back. Actually, I think he's from Japan. He could be South Korean, but I think it's Japan. I'm pretty sure it's Japan. But uh, I'm, I'm going to say Japan here. Uh, but uh, but now looking to fight it out in the base of Iagos. Iagos' base has seen a lot of trauma this game. Uh, but uh, but now going to be really pushing through. I am seeing people in the chat saying Vietnam. Interesting. I'll, I'll have to double check that. But uh, w let's just go with Kaio uh, for the moment. I want to tune in with, with our players down towards the south. Now, we did see earlier uh, that there were siege weapons of of war, weapons of war, uh, being rolled out down towards the south side. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot here from state. Now, one of the things to note is both of these Abbasid players have spawned with only two landmarks. So they've got their House of Wisdom, which has got 22,000 health, and they've also got their main town center, if we can find it, this one right here. So that is it. They've only got these two landmarks. So it is about protecting these at all costs. But I got to tell you, for state, he's very happy with his positioning here because they are right at the back of this forest. But uh, there's good news and there's bad news because where there is a forest, there is a second side to it. And indeed, Kaio knows about that second side. We'll take a look from his perspective and see how much he knows. Uh, I've got to be careful about turning the line of sight on and off. He does indeed know where his enemy is. Every, every time I turn off that line of sight, it's going to lag the game. So I'm going to make sure that I don't do it too much anymore. But we can see a bit of a run by was happening. Kaio looking ahead in towards the base of his enemy. We'll check in with Salami and see how he's doing over on that eastern or rather western side of the map. Let's take a look from his perspective and see what he sees as Salami begins chopping through. He's saved up enough wood now. He, he's... Is he? <laughs> Beastie Cuties actually walled him in. He said, hey, uh, you, you, you just stay in there. And Salami said, okay, I'll stay in here. Uh, so now Salami's got this difficult position where he's trying to make his way through, except it, it, 
I don't know exactly where he's planning to go. Now, I'd love to take a look from his perspective and see how much he knows about the layout of the map. We do actually hear a Khan rise. Wait, the Khan rises from the dead town center? Is that even legal? I thought so as well. That's, that is very, that is interesting, isn't it? But now we've got the Streltsy pushing out as well with a Bombard. Horseman coming out as well. Uh, very interesting that the Khan has decided... Uh, do you think... I was going to ask, do you think Salami's gone AFK at this point? Nope, he hasn't. Khan is back. Khan is looking to dish out. <laughs> I love that he's got the Khan and he's just like, I'm back, baby. I'm back. And, uh... <laughs> I mean, unfortunately for him, there's just not a lot going on at this point for him. Uh, he's going to need to reestablish himself over here. And the town center does come down. So Salami has managed to reestablish a position over on this western front. Enemy destroyed Blade's landmark. Blade losing landmarks. It's the Palace of Swabia that's gone down. I apologize for not catching it. But we can see the bombards rolling in on the backside. Blade definitely going to be looking to hold on. We'll tune in with Blade and see how he's doing. Oh my lord. Blade not looking good. What has happened to Blade? He's lost all of his villagers. Down to 71 villagers right now. Not a lot of space back here either. He's got a neutral market up towards the backside. This isn't looking good for Blade. He's going up against Kaiyu, who's got a huge amount of uh, a, a huge amount of uh, resources in the bank as well. Kaiyu is actually sitting on 200, 200 right now, if I remember correctly. He is indeed. He's he's got more than fifty thousand or more than forty thousand resources in the bank as well. So there is no excuse when it comes to Kaiyu uh, to be to be pushing down his enemy. And I suspect Blade might not be too long for this world the way he's going. This is really looking. Quite bad for <laughs> quite bad for Blade. He's gonna try and throw more farms down. We'll check in with him and see exactly what he's up to. You can hear he's under attack slowly but steadily. These buildings are getting cleaned out, and uh, we've actually got Blade, who's got a couple of villagers back here. And this is one thing that you've always got to be careful of: is if your enemy looks to chop through, kind of like the way that he is doing at the moment. And I, I think it's important to remember that when it comes to these sort of longer free-for-all games, that initially these forests act as a really good defensive point, but eventually. They're, they're going to be a potential threat. And that's exactly what we see happening over here. You can hear that Lucifron is still wheeling away, or wheeling around these siege units down towards the south. Interestingly, we don't have any landmarks coming, or rather wonders coming up just yet. If there was ever a good spot for a, a wonder, though, it's got to be in this back corner. Beastie's still sitting very happily up here towards the north. He has been uncontested this entire game, just walling like an absolute madman. His walls have got more than over 9,000 health points. That is correct. It's over 9,000. But now it looks like Kaio is continuing just to clean up. Very methodical here, making sure there are no units behind him. The villagers are going to get cleaned up as well. You can see that, unfortunately, they are slowly but steadily losing all of their ground here. And now Salami moving the pastures out. I guess you could say he's heading to greener pastures. Not really. They're blue, Drongo. But nice try. Nice try. Uh, I'm not quite sure exactly where, where he's heading, but it look he may have made an alliance with somebody. So this is something that will happen in these games. If you've got someone who's knocked out, because remember, they are playing with score. That's a lot of deleted units. So I suspect that there might be some fighting on the other side of the map. I'm not sure exactly what is happening, but that was a lot of deleted units. Uh, typically, you don't see that unless there's fighting happening. I'm trying to find it. No, I don't know what that was. He's, he's just deleted a whole bunch of... It looked like scouts, potentially. So it, it looks like what we might have here is a bit of an alliance coming out. So Salami has said, Hey, I need someone to help me out. Who's going to help me? And Kaios put his hand up and said, Hey, you can come live with me. But unfortunately for Salami, first and foremost, he's not going to be able to get through the gates. Uh, and second of all, uh, there are wooden fortresses absolutely everywhere. So Salami going to be trying his best to, to find a new housemate. But unfortunately, it looks like nobody wants to live with Salami. No one wants to live with Salami. Not today. He's uh, he's one of those spicy meatballs that you're just going to have to let... <laughs> <laughs> what is Salami up to right now? He's he's slowly separating the sheep. He's trying to... F <laughs> Salami, what are you doing? He's, he's got like the formation out right now. He's trying his best to build up a new home in the in the jungle. But unfortunately for him, Tarzan isn't what he needs right now. He needs a little bit more. And now it looks like Blade is turning his attention towards all the barracks. The sheep going down as well. Oh, poor Salami at this point. <laughs> <laughs> on the scout, the single scout comes in and looks to collect. Unfortunately, it looks like his sheep here are a little bit more loyal than Beastie Cuties. And all of the sheep are going to be able to stay here around the town center. Uh, was that too soon? I felt like that might have been too soon. Uh, the <laughs> oh, you, you know we love him. You know we love him. It sucked, though. It sucked. <laughs> he reached the sheep cap. Oh, that's probably it, then. 
A bit of a fight beginning to unfold. We've got Spearman going up against Horseman. Once again, Kaio as well as Blade going up against each other. Kaio's done a great job just to clean out Blade. He's also managed to secure up this gold as well. Not a lot of resources left on it. We hear Lucifron actually spending like crazy. We'll tune in with him down again onto the towards that south side. You can see he's actually chopping through over towards this position. This outpost doesn't have any emplacements on it, but it looks like the units are going to be moving towards that. Villagers have broken through, and with that, there is a potential beeline here through about 473 buildings towards that landmark. He's got a lot of production to deal with. We'll tune in with State and see how he's doing. He's on 195 population. I've just accidentally entered into the, the fog of war. Apologies for that. We'll take a look and see. <laughs> we'll take a look and see exactly what state's going right now you know what he's going it's it this is this is a build order i've seen from snooper uh it's basically where you just only make villages uh he's got 196 villages 92 of which are on food 97 of which are on wood fair enough you do you you do you state i am not gonna argue i am not gonna argue it is the villager only challenge and states brought it to free for all We'll check in over on the other side of the map as we've got pastures heading around, zooming around like cars. Blade finally finding his feet in the in the north side of the map and looking to push out. But remember, remember, there is one person who sits up towards that northern position who is just slowly and steadily gathering all the resources on the map. Just beastie cutie, just, just chilling out for the moment. I mean, he, he's actually got traders uh, in queue. So he's going towards a market. We'll take a look and see whether, where he's found it. There you go. So he's found a trade post down on this south side. Monastery was down here as well. Interesting. He built a monastery and cancelled it because he was going to capture the sacred site. And then he's like, hmm, I don't want people to know that I'm a target. If I take this sacred site, everybody gets to see it. And if everybody gets to see the sacred site, then maybe I become a target. Maybe they know where I'm at, something like that. And so as a result, I, I suspect that's what he's thought here. Smart move from him. Very, very smart move. Traders are now coming out though. And you can see that he's deleted a whole bunch of space just to get those traders out. Uh, I don't think you can supervise. I don't think you can supervise the market, but if you could, that would be, that would be pretty efficient. But uh, interesting that these guys have just... I, I mean, I, I say these guys have formed a treaty. It's not really a treaty. And uh, speaking of treaties, uh, it seems like the cavalry definitely should have called for a treaty because Blade has cleaned that up completely. Uh, and now continuing to push out. He's got a nice little mix of Culverin as well as the uh, the Mango in there as well. But the Springlord's coming out for the Rules player. Keep in mind, he does have that 12.5 range. Going to be firing off on those Culverin. A little bit of extra range there. Does get one shot by the Culverin on the back line because he does... Actually, yeah, he's got he's got the... Uh, actually, I don't I don't know whether he's got the extra damage from Chemistry just yet. The Blade on that backside doing well. Streltsy trying to push in as well. Down towards that south side. We'll take a look and see. We've got more walls coming up at this point. I'm trying to see whether we've got... Yeah, we, we had a little bit of a run through, but it seems like State has managed to clean it up. And I, I feel like this could very easily enter into a state stalemate period. Like, we've had a fair bit of fighting, but like, you've had Lucifron as well as State who have just chilled out for the most part. What happens if this game goes for like eight hours and nobody like moves? No one does anything. No, no one just sits... I guess we do have wonders that are always a potential, right? Like you throw a wonder up and then people have to stop you. So I guess that's one aspect. But, uh, I mean, th there is the potential this could go for six hours. I mean, I don't know about you guys. I I'm ready to cast for six hours. I don't know if you want to watch for six hours, but that, that would definitely be an interesting game, that's for sure. Uh, but now it looks like Beastie's finally made his way out onto the field. He has left the walls of China and now comes out with Fire Lancers and he is hunting. He is looking. Now, keep in mind, he's also got access to a landmark, uh, which enables him to have map hacks. That is correct. Well, not really map hacks, but you guys know what I mean. I'll look to see if I can find it. It is going to be the Imperial Palace. Let's see if we can spot it out. I can't spot it at all. Did I miss it already? I might have missed it. I can't see it. Maybe it's down over here. Oh yeah, it's totally down over here, isn't it? Wait, did he never make the Imperial Palace? He had to have made the Imperial Palace. How does he see all this? Wait, he never made the Imperial Palace? Oh no, he did. He did. He did. Okay, never mind. Imperial Palace walled in. Beautiful job. He's walling in the landmarks. So this allows him to see where his enemies are. By him doing this, it basically says, hey, this is where this guy is. And so he knows, okay, State is over here. Uh, he knows Kaio is over here. So he knows he can go and attack that. Runs through, manages to take out the first of the bombards. He's now coming through. Only a handful of fire lances. I say only a handful. There are 27 of them. Uh, but uh, he's definitely going to be causing a little bit of havoc over here. Almost helping out his ally as well. Keep in mind, his, his, well, not his ally, but his neighbor. And now we don't know if, if they are allied 
Uh, but they definitely aren't attacking each other, and Beastie's not doing it. And Beastie finds a way through the walls. This is not good right now. That's a lot of fire lancers that are chasing and not a lot of horsemen behind them. They're going to be able to break through here, and Beastie has definitely found a way through. This is not good right now for Kaio. Kaio going to be losing a lot of potential uh, landmarks here. And now Beastie running towards the back. He knows exactly where these landmarks are just because of that ability that he had from the Imperial Palace. Keep in mind, it reveals all the villagers. And that means any active villager. So if there's a villager that's standing near this high armory, which there is, it should reveal that high armory. But it looks like he's made his way through over towards the corner. I suspect he's going to be able to get through this chop as well. So making his way all the way back to that position. But now a wall coming up. Nice little quick wall coming through. Beastie trying his best to, to get through this position. Kaio really under under pressure at this point. We'll switch over to his perspective and watch as he begins to chase this around. And you can see that he's now heading down towards that high trade house. Keep in mind, kayo has got the additional health on all of his buildings. So it's going to take a little bit more oomph to get through. And Beastie turns his attention. Now sniping down the high trade house. A lot of military coming out for his opponent here. And Kaio looks like he might be able to save this. We hear Kaio continuing to delete stuff behind it. Plenty of units in queue. And Beastie just giving him the, the runaround right now behind this. We also see that Beastie has managed to take out this sacred site we were talking a little bit about earlier. So he's going to be able to capture that one. But Kaio doing a great job here of just continuing to follow around. Fortunately for Kaio, this wasn't 100 Fire Lancers. It very easily could have been. But I think he's learned his lesson well and truly on the front as multiple walls have gone up over on that position. And now Beastie gets cornered. The horsemen have finally made their way over towards this spot. You can see that the, there's 1.72 movement speed on these Fire Lancers. So I think he might actually... I don't know whether he's in Ming Dynasty or Yuan Dynasty. Uh, we can check from the Bombards. They should be 792. Yeah, he's, he's actually in Yuan Dynasty, which is definitely the right choice. I much prefer Yuan Dynasty in the late game to Ming. 10% health versus 15% speed. I feel like speed is almost a no-brainer there, especially on bigger maps like this where mobility is quite important. It can be a real game changer. But now it looks like we've still got this stalemate down towards the south. No one's really progressed here. Still a, lo a lot of villagers for these guys. We'll, ch we'll check in with Lucifron. We'll see how he's doing. Uh, so he's sitting on 200-200. He is maxed out. 148 villagers uh, and 52 military. It was just siege that he was walking back and forth. We hear it over and over again, just waddling around. I'm not, I'm not sure what his endgame he is here, but he does actually have enough for a wonder in the event he wants to go for it. Now, one of the strategies we often see players do is just drop down a million walls, a million outposts, and then put a wonder in the back of their base. And he's got the spot for it. He could be thinking about doing it. I wouldn't be surprised to see it come out for him. Over on the other side of the walls, though, we've got State. And we take a look over at State because State is moving out onto the map. The Khan is just doing what it does best and being annoying. He's actually taken quite a fair bit of the central uh, part of the map. A lot of these walls here are just palisade walls. And it feels like it, it would be very easy to target through. Uh, I don't think you can get through there. I'm sure he's tested it. Um, but we'll, we'll see exactly how he's going. But he's sitting at the moment on 195 villagers still. He's actually working towards the food cap. He may have gone AFK. Uh, but uh, we'll, let's look at his production. He's got 113 production buildings right now. So quite literally in 30 seconds, he could make 113 military units. That's how quickly he could make this trash if he wanted to. That That is impressive. We'll check in with Kaio. We'll see how he's doing on the defensive. He's actually a bit more on the offensive now. He's also stacking up plenty of resources in the bank, cl closing in on, on that 100,000 mark. He's got plenty of uh, plenty of, uh, of of units out on the field as well as plenty of villagers back in the base. We'll look in at, at Blade and see how he's doing. He's managed to make his way back up to 190 population. He's not really stacking up that much. He's got 200 gold in the bank. And you can see he does have that market or that trading post in his base. So in the event he's able to establish himself maybe over on this position... He could get a little bit of trade going for him. But now we've got ourselves a battle beginning to unfold. Springles on the backside looking to fire down on those Culverin. The Culverin will trade out quite effectively against the Springles if they're microed well. That's the key. The Springles do very well in, in, in higher numbers. Streltsy holding on and continuing to push through on this central position. We can see that there's some men at arms out as well. Uh, units under attack. The Sacred Site actually being neutralized down towards that southern site. Manganel's coming out as well. Manganel's moving forward. Springle's going to be looking to try and take them out, but the beautiful micro coming in from Blade on that backside. He's got plenty of culverins back there to support this. And keep in mind, you probably need two or three Springle's for every culverin your enemy's got because these guys dish out so much damage, and you can see he's losing Springle's by the second. So many of them going down. Plenty of spears still back here. Things not looking that good for Kaio, but keep in mind, he's got plenty of resources in the bank. Now we'll check in with Beastie Cutie and see exactly how he's doing up towards that northern position. He's sitting on 200-200. 
He's made his way all the way back up to 137 population. We'll check in and see how his traders are doing. Uh, there they are, the markets. He's got 35 traders. 35. Uh, so 35 in total traders. Uh, and so each one of those is going to be bringing back 153 gold. So he's going to be very happy. Okay. That is a lot of stables. That is a lot of stables. How many are we talking there? We're talking 73. In fact, he's got 62 stables and nine archery ranges. That's how you know this guy means business. Because he ain't stopping with those barracks. He ain't mucking around with those archery ranges. No, 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 sir. He's got just a handful of archery ranges and 62 of your finest stables. That is correct. This is a man who likes cavalry and a man who knows what he's doing. But uh, you can see that gold is definitely the limiting factor. He's got plenty of resources in the bank as well, which is a common theme that we see throughout this game, that players have got plenty of food, plenty of wood, and it's the other resources that are the question mark. We'll check in over on the other side of the map and see how... Who, who haven't we gone into? We haven't gone into Salami. Where are you, Salami? What are you up to, Salami? Look at you in the hideout right here. It's literally... We have George of the Jungle right now. This is Salami in the jungle. You, normally, you find him in the deli. Normally, you find him in the fridge. Not today. This is Salami. He is deep inside this jungle. He is making things work. He's trying his best to, to live a new life. And now he's getting some spearmen out as well. Just veteran spearmen, by the way. Not those, not those elite stuff. And let, let's take a look at his perspective and see what he sees. Because he is making his way back out over on this front. He's moved out villagers from the transport ship. He's managed to get them back out here. Now, how did he get them out? Where did he sneak them from? Because he's yet to really make a hole through here. I've got no idea. How did he get out here? Where did these villagers come from? Somebody's going to have to check the logs. We're going to have to check the logs after that. That's for sure. But we'll check in how that war over on the eastern side is going. A little bit of a stalemate. And play is really not yet to move through. Interestingly, now that I think about it, these, these guys almost certainly are allied. Beastie Cutie as well as Blade are almost certainly are almost certainly allied. Because right now, Beastie could kill Blade so easily. So, so easily he could kill him. But he doesn't. He could, like, very easily, 100 Fire Lancers, he, he just walks straight through. And so from that, you can almost guaranteed uh, determine that, that those guys are working together. Uh, and so from that, I mean, there's two things to go there. Like, obviously, it, it, it helps you out because they, they've managed to spawn very close to each other. So they're going to be very happy with that. But by the same token, uh, it, it could be very difficult for them in the late game. But uh, but it definitely seems like we got ourselves a little bit of a Mexican standoff right now. Everybody pointing at everybody else. Interestingly, still no wonders coming up at this point. Who's going to be the first one to blink? I think that's the question because we've entered into a bit of a lull. And now Lucifer is starting to mass up that siege. Did I just hear an age up come through for Salami? Or at least maybe he could afford an age up coming through? No, he can't. He actually can't afford an age up. Take a look at that. He can't afford an age up. Not yet. But now we've got some villagers actually looking to move out. State going to be trying to, to, to get out onto the battlefield with a couple of villagers. You can really see that. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious at this point, like... Okay, st state state is maxed out. Like, the, <laughs> is he AFK? Hold on, I, I got to check in on the state cam right now. He he's not AFK. State is is moving around. He's looking around. He's he's just maxed out on food. He's like, uh, you know, we we need more food. We need more food at this point. All right, state, you, you keep farming. I'm sure I'm sure you, I'm sure that food is going to be working magic for you, mate. You you keep doing you. But now Salami has made his way out on, onto the middle of the map. We can see that he's actually dropping down quite a few outposts here. But uh, almost immediately, Kaio's like, hmm, I smell blood. I smell weakness. I smell Salami. And he goes straight for this position. Salami just being so smart and so so deceptive uh, in, in this position that he's got in the back. I'm curious where that landmark is. Remember, he's got a landmark over here as well. There it is, the, the deer stones. He brought this over early. He knew he, he was in trouble, so he packed up everything. And now, once again, for the second time in the game, Salami's going to be under attack from elite horsemen. And it's going to be Kaio coming in, but it's a whole bunch of spears that are there to meet him this time, as well as some horsemen of Salami's. Uh, the spears are only veteran. Uh, the horsemen on the other side, only feudal. We'll check in over with... Uh, We'll check in over with Kaio and see how he's doing. Uh, he, he's still just chilling out. I'm curious exactly what's going on between these two guys. It, I, I feel like I'm almost watching an AI play down to the south. He's just got his... I like how the siege is always moving as well. Like, he's always moving the siege into a new position, into a new direction. We'll, we'll check in with Lucifer and see what he sees. We'll see what he, what he goes for. Because there, there's always the potential that he could look to try and backstab. I could only... I don't know whether these guys have gotten into a fight 
But you can see that they've walled each... Like, this is the difference, right? Like, I don't think these guys are allied, whereas I think these guys towards the north are. Because Beastie, if he wanted to, could so easily just kill Blade. And we actually do see a scout running through his base right now, which could be a sign that maybe Beastie has decided that it's time to kill somebody. Beastie now moving out with... Th this is Beastie's... Uh, for anybody unfamiliar, this is actually a patented combo. Uh, so it's illegal for anybody else to use this. O only Beastie Cutie is able to make this. And this is what, what is called the Siege Only uh, Army. And this is a very strong composition, which involves uh, Bombards, as well as uh, Bombards, as well as Bombards. Uh, and it also has a couple Nesta Bs, but mainly Bombards. But uh, essentially, it's known as Megatron Cutie, and he is assembled. So it's great to see him online, but now he's starting to stack up resources himself. And we take a look at, at his position. And I mean, th there's a fair amount of walls up here, but I feel like it's not a it's not a huge amount of walls that would actually prevent uh, th that would actually prevent his enemy from not killing him. That's the big thing because you can go for that wonder, you can go for it, but in the event that you do drop that wonder down, you will become a very swift target. So it, it's almost important to to kill your enemies before. Uh, before they get the chance uh, to, to strike you down with that wonder. And you, you really got to be careful to balance it. But now the Streltsy are going to be moving out. A lot of Streltsy here in this position as well. A, a fair bit of siege on that backside. He's going to be looking to defend here. Blade going up against those Streltsy mass. Doing quite well. But one of the things to note is we don't really have a lot of reinforcements pushing up too much. Scout continuing to spot around for Beastie. He's looking uh, to, to try and dish out some damage on somebody. He's got a big ball of siege and he wants to use it. He's going to be able to roll through someone if he wants to. But still, he just sits idle. He just chills out. He bides his time right now because obviously points are on the line here. Money is on the line. Spearman Mass really looking good now for Blade. We'll tune back in with Salami and see how he's doing. He's actually packing up the town center. Oh, we've got problems. We've got problems. Beastie Cutie has found Salami. It's been 36 minutes and finally he's fi found Salami. And now Salami is going to have to pack up and move. We can see this, the town center coming down to the south. But Salami, he was biding his time. <laughs> I don't think Beastie realizes exactly what havoc was being caused behind the wood line. She's managed to chop his way through. Beastie worked it out all along. He, he knew. He knew what Salami was up to. He said, I'll lock you in, but I know that you ain't coming out. And uh, and that's because Beastie was always going to be finding him. Always going to be looking to put down that hammer. And now we uh, we see him down towards this position, just absolutely getting smacked in. How does Beastie finish him off, though? That's the question. Is it just like... Is it just, is it just outposts with emplacements? I guess the big factor is that it's going to be stone that's coming in or th that you're needing because the stone is what's going to keep those alive. But now we've got our, our, our large mass of horsemen continuing to go through. Big battle beginning to unfold. We've got the Streltsy on the backside. Got to be careful of those Mangonels. A lot of siege on this backside as well. Kaio really looking to push in. He's got a huge score compared to Blade right now. Streltsy continuing to fire off down upon those spearmen. But the horsemen just die so damn quickly. I'm not sure exactly what Kaio's... Uh, what his fascination is with horsemen, but he seems to love them. He's just pumping them out non-stop. Continuing to push through now. Streltsy going to have to fall back. There are Mangonels as well as Bombards here. Springhold's down to a single number. He's got 12.5 range on these bad boys, but unfortunately just not a lot of them. Plenty more horsemen coming out. The reinforcements have got still quite a way to walk um, before they get back here onto the field. But now the Bombard's going to be able to move out. We'll take a look over at CG Cutie and see how he's doing. Still just chilling out for the moment. Has he deleted the nest of bees? Nope. Oh, no. He's, he's decided it's time to go and kill Salami. I, I suspect we may have another death on our hands unless Salami is able to repair... Oh, he's got the step down. He, he's got the step root out hiding in the forest. Look at this. Even in the event Beastie comes over and takes out the deer stones, he's still got the step root out. But now, down towards the south, we've got Lucifron just chilling out for the moment, still doing what he does best. Hanging out, minding his own business, adding in more and more production. <laughs> play is walling up on both sides. It, it, it is an absolute Mexican standoff. Neither player really scared to make the first move, though. And this is very interesting. I didn't expect that this would happen. I thought that there would be genuine... Like, I thought these guys would be fighting it out. But you can see that the, the bases are getting so ridiculously big at this point. Sheep actually gets killed. Beastie Cutie sending out a scouting sheep. It gets taken out by a bombard or a tower or something. I'm not sure exactly what took it out, but now Beastie is heading down. We can hear those bombards rolling. He is slowly but steadily making his way. He's walled in his enemy completely. So even in the event he wants to try and break through these, he's going to be really struggling. But just remember, he's always going to be able to run up and corner him in this corner. 
Uh, and, that, and that's where it's going to get difficult for Salami. But just remember, Salami, he hides. He waits. He plays for the placement. It's all about getting as high a place as possible. Ideally for him, he, just, he wants to wait until the end of this game. That is his win condition for Salami. But now back towards the base of Beastie. He's continuing with that farm economy. Still no sign at this point of any wonder coming down. Obviously, with all the resources that he's got in the bank, it's definitely a possibility. But we're slowly reaching that point where the resources on the map are getting exhausted. We're about to clock over towards that 60-minute mark. And there doesn't seem to be a clear victor at this point. There doesn't seem to be a clear favorite. Obviously, you'd have to point towards the Abbasid guys. They're both doing very well down there in their, in their, their stalemate, it seems. Look at that town center. That is an impressive town center. It has got some it has got some legs on it. But now more scouts moving out in classic Abbasid fashion. And uh, and State actually going to be scouting out Kaio, who's pushing into the base of Blade. We'll, shoot, we'll run on board with Blade now. He's down to 92 population. This could be bad right now. We could actually see Blade go tapping out. There's a huge push that's coming in from Kaio. He's managed to whittle him down all this time. Only Spearman and Hank Kennedy has actually remained in the base. Blade just popping out units nonstop, but not nearly enough production. He's stuck, stuck between a rock and a hard place. The rock being Beastie Cutie, that he's relied on for the majority of this game. The hard place being Kaio, who's just continually rammed him. And now all of a sudden, it could be a good game for Blade. We'll tune in with Kaio and see exactly how he's doing. You can see the production just going absolutely ham. And by the way, did I mention he's on 765 bounty at this point? Point. Not a bad amount of bounty to be on, let's just put it that way. Relic going to be dropped down on that ground as well, so he could look to capture that one up. I want to check in on the high trade house. What did he get with that? 255 a minute. Not a bad amount either. He's got plenty of deer back here. In fact, that's why his bounty is so damn high. It is that high trade house that is just pumping out deer nonstop. But now a nice little choke point does get found. Blade's going to be able to hold on a little bit longer. There's not a lot of siege that's really moving out. He's got units back here, but nothing to really push through. We don't see any bombards. We don't see any trebs. Nothing like that. It's just slowly and steadily working down all of these buildings. Salami's died. Salami died. How did Salami die? I missed it. I missed it. Salami's died. Salami's been killed. How did he die? What happened to Salami? Salami's been tapped out. The bombards came over. We weren't even focused on it. Beastie's moved away. We're going to have to get an admin decision. We're going to have to get an admin decision on that one and just clarify exactly what's happened there. But it did look like Beastie may have tapped him over towards that position. My one question is, where is this landmark? This landmark is not here. There was once a landmark that was there, but it is not anymore. It is not anymore. And Kaio continues to push now. Chat right now saying that it was about five minutes ago. There you go. So, unfortunately, we didn't get it. That is the consequence of, of, of me being hyper-focused on the battle. So, I do apologize to you guys for missing that. We, we will get an admin decision, and I will let you guys know in, in, the, in, the, in the comments the score, because we do have an administrator, Lord Petito. He's going to be working overtime to make sure that we work out every single landmark that was destroyed, who destroyed it, when they destroyed it, and how they died. But now Kaio continuing to push through. We'll take a look over on the perspective of Blade and see where he's at. He's on 105 population. You can see he's got so many units in production, but just no space back here. And that's the consequence. He's actually got plenty of space back over towards this position. Uh, but we do see that he was taken out by the outpost. I think it's got a bombarding placement on it. Continuing to apply pressure. We'll take a look down towards the base of the two Abbasid players who are very... These guys are just best friends at this point in time. These guys are just best friends. I think th these guys have got to be locked in some sort of agreement. But now we've got ourselves an opening. An opening has made its way through. In fact, I'm not sure how much of an opening there is. He's definitely got line of sight. There seems to be a bit of an opening. It definitely does appear that we've got a united Abbasid Empire right now. You're 100% right on that one. But now this push is, re is really coming through. We can see those reinforcements. I mean, Blade's doing a decent job of holding despite the limited the limited population, but I feel like Kaio is wearing him down slowly and steadily. And we can see the reinforcements continuing to come in. I don't know why Kaio hasn't just put in some bombards. I feel, I feel like two or three bombards for Kaio and the game is over for, for Blade, right? And then Kaio gets to claim. In fact, Kaio is down to 56,000. I say down. I think he's up. He's on more than 110,000 uh, resources right now in the bank. We'll tune back in with uh, with Beastie, who is currently our favorite to, to take away this game. We hear the siege moving as well. The siege is looking to reunite. He's got 75 population at the moment in military. Let's take a look and see exactly what he's got. 18 bombards and 7 nest of bees. 
You you just know this what this is a Reddit post waiting to happen <laughs> right here. This is a this is classic, you know, Reddit post territory. It's like, yep, I just played against this. Nothing I could do. Nothing I could do. Impossible. <laughs> Impossible to beat that one. Oh my lord. That, that was a lot of bombards. Now moving through in the center. Uh we, we continue to see that he's actually moved into archers instead of going streltsy. Uh, so looking to save that gold. He's actually got 870 gold a minute. So I suspect a lot of that's probably going to be coming from relics. He's also obviously got the golden gate, which is going to be able to buy him plenty of resources. Uh, but it doesn't look like we've got a wonder just yet. I'll take a look at, at the wonder tracker. You can see that nobody's got a wonder just yet at this point when it comes to sacred sites. We can track that as well. We've got one for each of these three players. So nothing really happening on those fronts either. We're now an hour and four minutes, 64 minutes through. We still have five players remaining. Now I'll have to double check the rule books. I'm, I'm not 100% sure if it's four players remaining when the wonder is built to get the extra points or whether it's uh, a total of four players, at least four players. I'm not sure, but we'll double check it. But a nice little push coming out from Blade here. Looking to try and use that Holy Roman Empire. We hear, we hear the cavalry. Let's take a look at the production for Kaio right now. He's running on 81 production facilities, all being rallied towards that front line. We can see the horsemen actually making a little bit of a mistake, so rallying them into this position, and then they're just sort of running around into the back. Springwood's now finally going to be coming forward, looking to take that out, but Blade's still managing to hold on. We don't hear. Where, where's the siege? There it is. Mm. Oh. <laughs> Look at the walls coming down right now for Beastie. He's trying to get through. Oh, I think he's... Oh, I think we might have ourselves a bit of a problem on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Now, th 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 this is one of the things I've theorized, right? You can go mass siege. It's actually very, very strong. Like, to the point where you... Especially Chinese siege, you one-shot units, right? Like, this is literally like having 20 one-shotting units every second. Because remember, they get the upgrade for the reload drills, which reduces their... Or, or inc improves their attack speed. Uh, re reduces their reload time. That's probably the best way to say it. The United Abbasid Empire down towards the south is still very happy, still very united. I want to check in and see, is State still on max food? Wait, State's... What, where did... What is State... Do? State's got 246 camels in the bank. 200... Okay, State has found a way to bypass the, uh, the food limit here. He's just gonna... <laughs> is he selling off all of his food as well? I think he's selling off his food. Blade uh, really under pressure right now. We can see that he's just getting pushed to the walls right now. <laughs> I can't believe that. That's such a smart move by State. He's like, I'm just going to... To save on food, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to spend all of my food on units. I'm just going to stack these bad boys up. He's literally got more than 500 units in queue right now. He's fine. He's fine. But up towards that north, we see that Blade's army has basically just crumbled to nothing. He's down to 88 military. He's under attack from, from that one side down towards the south, but Beastie Cutie is almost out. He's almost broken out of his own walls. He's very happy. He's basically playing PvE at this point in time. But, uh, but now Blade is really under attack. We'll jump on board with Kaio once again as we continue to see his economy is just taking over. He's done a great job. And now, finally, we've got a bit more siege coming out. We've got mangonels. In fact, we've got three mangonels that are making their way towards the battlefield. And this could be really difficult for Blade to hold on to against. Uh, just keep in mind that Blade, he's very much backed into the, the opposite or in, into this corner. There's not a lot of resources back here for him. Not a lot of space for him either. Now those Springwood's going to be moving forward. Going to have a tough time. Might have to go for a kiss or two. Mangonel's going to be firing off. We hear those reinforcements continuing to come in for Kaio. He's looking very healthy. And now pushing through. A decent amount of units here. Still yet to see many Lance necks. Uh, probably because they're so gold heavy. We did see them come out earlier in the game. Blade managed to take out quite a few people. Quite a few units with those Lance connects. Still the Siege just waits. And now the Siege moves. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got Siege on the move. Beastie Cutie is looking to go for that comp that deadly composition. The classic Bombard plus Bombard composition. But the question is going to be whether he can actually take out Blade before it becomes too soon. He's going to be moving down across towards Blade's territory. But I think it might be too late for Blade. I don't think he's going to be able to save him. They've lived with each other peacefully all this time. And now we see the Snake. The Snake of Bombards makes its way around the mountain. And we've got ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen, because Beastie has awoken. The Chinese player has finally decided to come out. We're at the 69th minute into the game, and the Chinese player has awoken. <laughs> you can see he's moving up towards the north. He's like, give me those landmarks. Give me those juicy landmarks. 
He, uh, I'm sure Blade is in the chat right now like, help me, help me, Beastie. And Beastie's like, oh yeah, brother, I'm going to help you. <laughs> Look at Beastie, like, trying to get through the gate. He's like, he's moving through, <laughs> like, orderly fashion, please, everybody. Orderly fashion. <laughs> landmarks remaining right now for Blade. He's got one, two, three landmarks. That is it. The fourth landmark was killed earlier. That was the Palace of Swabia. It was taken out about 40 minutes ago, it feels like. And it has been a slow and steady push through, but now, now Beastie coming through. Hey, brother. <laughs> Remember me? Remember your best friend? He blasts through that wall and then decides just to hang out for a little bit. Yeah, he actually might be able to help out. Now, th this is going to be the question, right? Uh, this is something that we talked about, is that when it comes to this, you don't know who's going to kill who. Is Beastie coming in here to save Blade, or is he coming here to kill Blade? And now he he's just chilling out for the moment. He needs this line of sight that's going to come up. We'll take a look back down towards the United Abbasid Empire. And we got ourselves a little bit of a wall delete because, hold on a minute, these Abbasid Empires aren't so united anymore. A lot of units in here as well. Sacred Sight also being neutralized up towards the north. As, uh, as Kayo do does break through. Bomba. <laughs> Look at the bombard numbers right now for Beastie. He's, uh, he's in the mood to kill things, it looks like. As he continues pumping through. <laughs> Blade not looking too happy right now, I suspect. Actually, he's not killing the landmarks. Is he actually saving Blade? I think he's saving Blade. <laughs> I think he's actually saving Blade. Man, he just... Hold on. He's, he's, he's killing the villagers, though. Look at that. He actually saved Blade. Okay. We might have, the, we might have like, a five-hour game on our hands right here. Because Kaio was the only hope of killing Blade. But the question is, like, the United Abbasid Empire, like, only one of them can win, right? Like, they both can't win. They both can't share victory. And now Beastie actually going up towards the north doing... Oh, my God. Is Beastie going to just come in on... Whoa, oh my God. A bit of lag right there. Is Beastie just going to come through on the backside? The nest of bees actually get pulled aside. He's like, hey, get out of here, fellas. It's just bombards now, baby. That's all we need. But keep in mind, Kaio does have a pretty decent mass of, of horsemen. You know what? There's not enough. You would probably need 150 horsemen to kill this many bombards. Maybe not that many. I reckon he could probably get away with like 60. Bombard's going to chill out for now. Kaio still continuing to push in. Trade looking still very healthy for Beastie. 145 a tick over there. Kaio's still working his magic over on this front side. It's not too long before Blade goes down. Now, objectively, Kaio has done very good to clean up Blade here. And you would almost have to certainly give the points over to Kaio. But remember, it all comes down to that last landmark. If Beastie comes in here and snipes that last landmark, then all the hard work that Kaio has fought for goes out the window. Because it's all about the last hit. It's just, if you've ever played Dota, if you've ever played League, if you've ever played Heroes of New Earth, you will know it always comes down to the last hit. It's not about who did the damage, it's about who killed them that really matters. And now Beastie looking to come into position. The Bombard's hovering towards the north. It's almost like we've got two lions fighting over a gazelle, but one of the lions can't see the other lion on the other side. And now that landmark towards the south might get targeted down. The consequence of not having any Bombards right now, Kaio really starting to live and see that. As he starts to focus down that Burgrave Palace, keep in mind there's... <laughs> I like the copy pasta. Hold <laughs> on, give me a sec. To be fair, it's really hard to control the late game Chinese army. You need a hotkey for siege to counter infantry, siege to counter cavalry, siege to counter siege, siege to counter hand cannonballs, siege to snipe elephants, and siege to counter siege so your siege doesn't die. That's very that's very true. It's very hard to control. But now it looks like the siege is going to be coming in. Beastie Cutie, is, he knows where the landmarks are. At least he will very shortly. Coming in, going to be looking to snipe down that, that town center. The bombards all moving into position, looking like they want to come in for the final blow. He's actually defending. He's forcing back away from Blade. He says, get back, heathen. And now begins to focus down the Springles. Beastie, help me, stepbrother. Help me. And Beastie helps him. Beastie comes in, takes out the first Manganel. The second Manganel goes down. Beastie, <laughs> Beastie kills him. He stabs him in the back. He says, good night, sweet prince. It was beautiful knowing you, but unfortunately, it is time for you to rest. And good game on Blade as the sun finally sets on the Holy Roman Empire. Beastie Cutie claims a kill and moves on to the next place in the game. Good night, sweet prince, indeed. Blade is a Eliminated. Rest in peace. It was a beautiful performance, Blade. You did very well, kid. Wow. <laughs> you can see the way that he pushed him away. It, it, it very much looked like, you know, I'm sure Blade for a second was very happy. He's like, yeah, 
you messed with me, you messed with my big brother. That's Beastie. And then Beastie's like, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> and then he kills him in like, <laughs> in three shots. He quite literally kills him. And now Beastie just heads back into his turtle shell to continue turtling up. Kaio now going to be turning his attention. Oh my lord, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world's first wonder, Lucifron with a wonder. Down in the corner, we've got the prayer hall of Ukba. It has been placed down immediately upon the death of Blade. That is going to be a key factor. We have got a wonder in play now, and that means that this game has a timer on it. Get your timers out because we are heading towards a wonder victor victory. 14 minutes 40. So now... We, there is also the potential for a second wonder to come down. Keep in mind that Beastie, he is no he is no stranger when it comes to dropping down wonders. So we could potentially see a wonder out of him. But uh, that gives Beastie a new target, a new, a new plan. So, <laughs> oh my lord, the United Abbasid Empire. Well, let's just put it this way. I suspect it's not going to be united for much longer. And can we just, can we just admire for a second the size of State's base? Look how big this base is. Look, look how big this base is from State. It is absolutely ludicrous how many buildings State has made here. It just it's, it just goes forever. And now you can see State actually deleting the walls here. I suspect he's trying to get a pathway through for everybody so that every, everyone can come join in uh, and, and, and help take out Lucifron because he is going to be the new target. And now we see that is exactly the case. Now, one of the key things is, is when a push like this is happening, the most important thing to do is build uh, to bring villagers because what you want to do is you need to set yourself up a new forward base. And just as we can see that State is setting up a new forward base down here, Kaio is going to be doing the same thing. Now, Beastie, he's not going to need a forward base. Why? Because his army isn't going to die. His army is just complete siege. We can see the nest of bees there heading back away. I suspect the bombards are well and truly on their way. Where, where are the bombards? Locate. Does anybody know where the bombards are? There they are. Now, if he wanted to, he could just move them across the middle. That'd be quite effective, actually. He could just move them over here. That would, it would really reduce the time as well. But now moving in, we can see how quickly these guys have, have moved. We're at 13 minutes right now. Now, so what the smart thing to do in this position is actually go for your own wonder. If you can go for your own wonder at the same time. So the trick is you want to time it so that your wonder comes up. and But you, the enemy knows that they need to kill this guy, but they also need to kill you. And so now they're torn. And obviously, you need to make sure that this guy dies. So there's, there becomes a real strategy to it and a real way that you've got to play it. Uh, but uh, we, we can see this army is, is quite intent on, on moving towards the, uh, the the stone walls. Keep in mind, there's actually no siege out here for Kaio. And it was something that we've seen a reoccurring theme throughout this game for Kaio is that he hasn't brought any siege with his army or hasn't brought, brought any base killing siege. Obviously, there's been Springles, there's been Mangonels, but there hasn't been any of those really important bombards that we've needed. And as a result, you know, he, he very easily could have killed Blade up towards the north. He had all the tools for it, with the exception of the hammer. The hammer being, of course, that bombard. Village is now moving forward for Beastie. He is looking to uh, drop down a forward base. It turns out he does indeed want to go for that forward base. Kaio's got more than enough resources as well to drop down a wonder. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually see a second or even a third wonder coming out. Um, but uh, we've got we've got ourselves plenty of, of horsemen uh, at the moment. They're looking to try and find a way through. Has he found a way through? I, th I think if he brings villagers, he might be able to chop through. But now, BC actually dropping down a monastery. This is a very curious decision. Monastery as well as stables coming down on the front line. We'll check in and see if we can find Beastie and his fleet. I say fleet, but it's not really a fleet, is it? I hear them. Oh, yeah, I hear them. Oh, my God. Can you imagine killing this? Okay, ima imagine this, right? What if you, you lo what if you locate Beastie's siege army? And at the same time, you build your own wonder. Oh my god. Oh my god! Oh, we could have- we had problems already! State's broken through! Oh my lord, I, I don't know how I didn't see it. State is under attack. You can see the House of Wisdom still stands. A lot of spears here are gonna be able to clean this up. Now, keep in mind, this is a, a bit of a, a rookie error here from Lucifron. We've got a- we've got a, a bit of a rookie error. He has failed to wall in a wonder. Now, this problem occurs only for the Abbasid Dynasty. So you can see that he can't delete this wonder. He can't delete this or th this landmark. So he would have to delete all of the unit, the buildings around it. And it looks like that's what he's going to be doing. He's now deleting it. But with that, he's going to be losing his golden age. 
And with losing the Golden Age, you're going to be losing production speed. And that's going to be a key to reinforcement. So this becomes really, really difficult. And a lack of foresight here for Lucifront in doing this. But this is definitely going to be a big factor because not only have those horsemen broken through, but they've made a pathway uh, for these units to get through. We can see he's got plenty of them back here. We'll, we'll ride on board with State and see how he's doing. He's still got 110 villagers for whatever reason. He's decided that it's it's still appropriate to keep villagers for some reason despite reaching the, the food cap multiple times in this game. Towards the north, we see those those bombards continuing to move through. That he has brought absolutely everything. Kaio here, keeping his units on on uh, hold ground so that they're not attacking. And everybody is funneling towards this position. We're going to take a look towards the corners and just make sure that we're not seeing any more wonders coming down. Because do not be surprised if they do. At the same time, we hear those bombards making their way through. The first wave has been defeated. The second wave yet to be. We'll take a look at Lucifron and see how he's doing. Looks like he's going to be able to get up this completed wall. But just remember, this is one layer of walls. And it seems like there's not too many, re not too, too much to break through. As now Beastie Cutie begins walking down the aisle with his best friends. He's got State. He's got Kaio. These guys are now working together to take down their mutual interest or their mutual enemy. But remember that as soon as that goes down, as, as soon as that wonder goes down, they will turn all hell on Beastie Cutie, I suspect. And now he's trying to hold on. He's got Culverins on the backside. All of the, the horsemen run in. Spearmen going to be popping out. Mangadel's on the backside. We can see there's so many camels, so many horsemen in here. Beastie at the same time running to, down towards that south and southern position. He knows exactly what his enemy is up to. This is a perfect time for him right now if he wants to drop down that wonder to do it. And you can see the game is starting to struggle. We've got so many people in this game with so many units in this game the game is starting to lag a little bit that we'll check out on the timer and see exactly how we're going we've got eight minutes to go for lucifer it seems like there's absolutely no way he holds on there are so many units in his base right now i'd be surprised if he makes it to seven minutes he still doesn't have the damn walls up get the walls up lucifer and remember that even though the wonder is here Oh, did I, did I just hear the sound of another wonder going up? That's the sound of a second wonder, ladies and gentlemen. Beastie Cutie going for the wonder victory as well. Still no third wonder that is the potential po possibility. And remember, that is a Chinese wonder, which means it goes up very, very quickly. So Beastie Cutie is coming down towards the south here. Do not be surprised if players turn their attention towards Beastie Cutie's army almost immediately uh, up upon this happening. But remember, in the event that you do take out Beastie's army here, that's just going to give him population space back at home. This is playing the long game here. He knows exactly how to play this. Direct all the attention over towards the enemy. And then just as the enemy is being killed, you drop down your own wonder. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have got a second wonder online. It is happening. Two players, two wonders. We have got ourselves a game. Beastie Cutie continues funneling down towards that position. 28,600 health on this House of Wisdom. Begins focusing down the first set of walls. It's going to be a one shot on that wall. No, it's going to be a two shot. As well as actually got a lot of spearmen here. This this actually doesn't look good for Beastie right now. He wasn't paying attention towards that, that back spot. Nesta B is going to be firing off towards it. Villager is going to be able to run through. He's managed to open it up. But the, the forces here for Lucifron actually looking really good. lucifron has got a huge amount of units out. He's sitting on 31 villagers only. Lucifron really trying to hold on. Villagers up on the walls now. That is... Oh my god, what if the villagers make their way through to the, the other side? Hold on, hold on. He gets, Beastie Cutie actually just gets completely annihilated. The villagers, the villagers, let me at him, let me at him. The villagers. So fortunately, Lucifron has made the gate the right way. If he made the gate the other way, the villagers can come in onto the inside. Uh, not that it really would have changed much. We can see there's a huge army for Lucifron to defend this. He manages to hold. He manages to rewall. He's down to 180 stone, 34 gold. He's got plenty of resources in the bank, though. In the event he wants to go for units, we'll take a look at the production. Lucifron has got 126 production buildings, of which 107 are barracks. 18 of them are siege workshops. That, my friend, is a lot of production. But we hear more units under attack towards the south. They're going to get cleaned up completely. And now the second wave begins coming through. Really, it's the third wave because we had that first wave that came through. And now, I mean, th this is the difficult position, right? Because now you've kind of torn your enemy because now we've got a real problem because everyone's going for Beastie Cutie now. They said, hold on a minute. Beastie Cutie, you tried to misdirect us. You tried to force us up towards or down towards our enemy. And now we are united against you.
but little do they realize their enemy has held. Lucifron has held this entire time. He's cleaned it up, and this is the consequence of going too early. If you go too early, if you shoot your shot too early, then you misdirect your enemies, and now all of a sudden, you've got a problem because all of your enemies are just going for you now, and you've got... Th these guys are switched on. They know exactly what's up. They know the threat here is China. They know the threat is not Abbasid. Abbasid, meh, you don't worry about Abbasid. That'll be fine. Beastie focusing 100% of his attention on the Abbasid player, trying to get that one door down. We'll check in on the timer and see how it's going. We've got five minutes going for Lucifron. Five minutes. That is the countdown. That is the clock. Lucifron is potentially going to win here in the next five minutes of the game. All of the units here get deleted now for State. State going to be reinforcing down towards this position. You can see all... As soon as he deletes those units, they immediately pop out over on the other side of his base. Beastie Cuties, Wonder destroyed. They literally told him, Beastie, destroy your Wonder or we will not let you win. Beastie deletes his own Wonder. Beastie now with 758 stone in the bank and says, we need to kill this guy. If we don't kill this guy, we are going to lose. And that's exactly what they do. They immediately turn around. They immediately, I've never seen that before. A wonder delete. He deleted the wonder to stay alive. Wow. That, it, that, that, it, it, that I'm speechless. I'm speechless. He built a wonder. 24,000 resources. And then has to delete it because he can't kill his enemy alone. He needs the help of his friends. He can't deal with 118 barracks. He can't deal with 18 siege workshops. It is just too much for him. Now those reinforcements making their way in and Kaio still yet to go for a bit of a forward base. And this is something that I talked about a bit earlier about bringing those villagers forward. You need to get those villagers not too long on that timer now. We'll check in with it. Three minutes, 35 to go. Things not looking pretty. Now, remember, these guys do not have siege here either. They do not have siege. So we, we could potentially have a victory coming out for Lucifron here. Now, remember, if the in the event that there is a wonder victory, in the event there is a wonder victory, every player that is still alive will get additional points for being alive at the end of the game. But the fact that we've had Lucifron do it with so many people in the game as well would mean that he would get extra points for that Wonder Victory. So this is a huge potential window here for Lucifron going for this Wonder Victory. We've seen Beastie Cutie try and do the big brain move. And now we've got three minutes to go until Wonder Defeat comes through. Players are only facing up against one set of walls. All the units going to be back here for Lucifron. You can see them just reinforcing immediately as soon as they die. They are immediately replaced. We'll check in on the perspective from Lucifron. And you can see he's got 275 men-at-arms in queue. 278 spearmen. 13 men-at-arms as well as the 262 and 8 culverin. Beastie Cutie also looking to push down. We can see that there's not too much longer on this timer. He is under attack at all points at, in his base. The only point that matters, though, seems to be the one that is, is safe, the one that is surviving. They're managing to whittle him down, but unfortunately, there just doesn't seem to be any siege out here. The Bombards are making their way through, but now you can see that the, the Spearmen turning their attention towards the Bombards. All of the units out, there's huge amounts of, of horsemen as well as camel archers, fire lancers. Everything is coming out, but there's just no siege. The Bombards on the backside of what are needed to break through the wall. But you can see the Spearmen are coming too. We've got two minutes to go until a potential wonder victory comes through. We'll, ju we'll jump on that tracker just one more time so you can see it. One minute and 50 to go. Could have this been the big brain play that went wrong? We had Beastie Cutie, who was in the pocket position, prime position, to take out this game. He was playing China. He had the pocket. He was in a beautiful spot. He puts down the wonder, and all of a sudden, the enemies decide that he becomes the target instead. And as a cruel turn of events, he has to delete his own wonder to save what little chance he has of winning the game. And now there is a very real chance that he may lose the game because of it. This is the biggest brain play that actually went wrong here. Beastie Cutie is not looking pretty. At this point in time, Lucifron is looking to try and hold on. State's going to be pushing through as well. A lot of cavalry coming through. But remember, there is absolutely no siege. It just gets completely cleaned up before it can run in. We still don't see any siege. We'll head back down towards this south side. You can see... One minute to go until victory. We've got the prayer hall of Ukba, which stands without a single scratch upon it. These guys yet to break through the walls, unable to go through, trying their best. They're circling around saying, who's got the siege? Who? I, I brought the salami. I brought the cheese. Well, who brought the siege? We needed siege, man. Where, where's the siege? And the siege, unfortunately, 
It is nowhere to be seen. The state tries, but cannot bring through those siege units. He, this is, this might just be a good game. I think we've got a good game on our hands. Ladies and gentlemen, the first game of the Outback Octagon will be going over to Lucifron from Spain, playing with the Abbasid Dynasty. I think there's almost no way that he can be stopped at this point in time. We look at the Wonder Tracker and there is 15 seconds to go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Outback, o <laughs> the Outback Octagon. I can't even say it right now. What a story. What a story we have witnessed. Lucifron takes the game. Good game. Well played. Lucifron 7 is victorious. Well, fellas, if you're watching this on YouTube, I hope you've enjoyed this game. This is the first of many Outback Octagon games to come. What an absolute banger that one was. Let's take a look at the village accounts because we hit new peaks in that game. We hit some incredible peaks there, almost up to 200 villagers there for state for almost the majority of that game. But the real sneaky guy, Lucifron. But you can't help but feel that it wouldn't have gone his way if it wasn't for Beastie Cutie putting that wonder down. I can't help but feel that that sealed the deal for these guys. Once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, it is 15 GMT, Wednesday and Thursday on Twitch. You can catch us live right now. There is 1,500 people enjoying this stuff live. So if you're wanting to check it out live, I encourage you, jump on over, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.